Well, hello, Darkfish friends, and welcome to our preview. The Acropolis Rally of the Gods. It is one of the classics on the calendar, if not the classic on the calendar. Lots to talk about ahead of this one. And, well, for our, our preview of this one, we've been joined by Mark Piakowski. Mark, it's wonderful to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Colin. Pleasure to be here. Now, if you remember, on our preview for the Ypres Rally, we had a multiple Canadian rally champion with Antoine Lestage. Well, we're keeping the North American theme with this one, Mark, aren't we? Because you do your rallying in North America, and I have to say, you do it with some degree of success. Uh, it depends who you ask, but I try my best. <laughs> but a uh, very different climate here in, in Greece, and happy to be here. But yeah, he's very modest as well. Listen, he won the Snowdrift Rally this year, Mark, in a more or less bog-standard Subaru. That is against the open-class Sub what would it be? Open class Subarus, we have open class uh, Hyundai's, all sorts competing there. It works cars. It was a heck of an achievement for sure. But as I said, we have a lot to talk about, and Mark is going to help us navigate through, Mark, the trials and tribulations, the pitfalls that perhaps lie ahead for our drivers this weekend. Let's talk first about really the opening day, because I think that is where we are going to really see things, well, if you like, just falling into place in the course of this rally. There's a big rat challenge on day one, isn't there? Well, there's a lot of stages. There is no surface. We obviously know the tough Acropolis conditions, mm. so it's mm. going to be very demanding, and I think the cars with the most reliability will shine through. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, the first day, okay, we start tonight in the Olympic Stadium, and that's going to be very special. Remember, we've actually been there a couple of times before in the Olympic Stadium. The first time we were there, way back in, I think it was 2005, 2006, it was packed out and it was the most incredible atmosphere and we're hoping for something similar tonight. But the real action gets underway on Friday morning. We head to Lutraki. Right now we're in Lamia, which is kind of north, I suppose, of Athens. Lutraki is to the west of Athens. That is where we go for our opening day and that is where we're going to see some really interesting stages. You know, you do, you mentioned the fact that we've got, what, six stages tomorrow, no service. But I think perhaps more importantly, it's five first passes on those stages, Mark. And that is something we don't see very often in the championship these days. No, not at all. I mean, usually, you know, WRC events now are, you know, a few stages run two times mm. over. So drivers will get to, you know, probably up the ante a little mm. bit on the second pass. But I think this is a very traditional rally. Mm. And so, you know, one pass throughout all the stages, I think, is great. And it mixes things up a little bit. I think it's good to see. It really will mix things up. This morning's shakedown is anything to go by. The road cleaning effect is really, really going to handicap, in particular, the man who's at the, at the far end here, almost at the far end, and leading the championship, Cali Robinpera, and our two main Hyundais. Yep. All three of those drivers could struggle tomorrow morning. Well, we saw the times on the first pass to shake down. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Robinpera was dead last, Nowhere. if not last. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then times progressively got, got faster and faster. So I think the likes of like a, a, a Loeb or the M Sport folks yeah. will, will certainly have an advantage. But we'll, we'll see. I think Cali's got something up his sleeve. Hmm. I think it's going to be difficult for Robin Perth tomorrow. What we saw, and, and listen, Shakedown, uh, once we got into the second, third pass of Shakedown, things evened themselves out. Robin yeah. Perth moved up, as did Tanak, as did Neuville. But that first pass, we that's had, true. I think, four M Sport cars in the top five. That's true. And I think that's what we'll see tomorrow. I genuinely do. Maybe not quite that level of consistent performance from M Sport, but they have a real opportunity, in particular Green and Loeb tomorrow morning. And they have to make the most of it. And I think they know that. I think yeah. they know that they have to push the first day. Um, this is really their, their, their advantage to, to really you know, grab it with both hands. Um, and I think Cali knows that as well. And a few of the other you know, folks that are starting up on the top of the order know that as well. But I think uh, all to play for on the first day. It really is. But here's the thing, as a driver, you know, low, great starting position. Breen, not a bad start position. The road will clean. The opportunity will be there. But the jeopardy is also there. The rocks are beginning to yep. appear in the road. How do you balance you know, the need to capitalize on that situation with the need to make sure that at the end of the day you get through with no punctures and no damage? It's a real balancing act, that, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was just on shakedown there this morning, and even after the first few cars, they were pulling these large Acropolis rocks out on the road. And, you know, at, I think we saw Sebastian Ogier doing that in certain, like, Sardinia events, yeah. certain rough events, specifically cutting the corners and pulling these rocks out on the corners. So 
a lot of jeopardy, but um, they might be playing that to their advantage as well. That's interesting. I, I, you know, I'd forgotten about that. You know, we've seen certainly in the past Loeb, Ogier, perhaps more so on tarmac rallies, when he's first on the road, he will go as deep as he can into the cuts to make that road more polluted for the cars behind him. Might there be a little bit of that going on? You seem to think maybe there will be tomorrow the guys in front. I don't think really, with the size of the rocks out here, you can take that risk. I think you've got to keep it as clean as possible. I, I think you're right. I just know, you know, very vividly that I remember OJ specifically taking one yeah. corner and yeah. like in Sardinia, used and he even mentioned it. He was pulling the rocks out in the corner because he knew he had the the advantage there. But but we'll see. I don't, I don't think the you know they will be playing that card necessarily mm. uh, for tomorrow. But we'll see. I think the card to play tomorrow is the survival card. I really do. I think whoever gets through tomorrow without punctures, without suspension damage, will be there or thereabouts. That could be Robin Perra. He'll be clearly hampered by his road position, more likely to be potentially one of the M-Sport drivers. It is all to play for, and tomorrow will be a strategic day. Just to let you know, by the way, folks, you might just pick out that in M-Sport, there is quite a bit of activity going on. This is why. What did you shake then? Uh, three cylinder on the start, on the start line, and changed the plugs, but didn't work, so we had to come back uh, to tow the car. That sounds a lot better than it did earlier on. Yes, now it sounds normal, so I think they understood something. Uh, I just wanted to go and ask. So Off you go, Seb. Well done. That's encouraging. Thank you. So Mark, for sure day one is going to be interesting. We then move back up to the Lamia region, up into the mountains for day two and day three. Different sorts of stages. Different different sort of stages. Um, I actually don't know. Is that a, there are two pass stages, are yeah. they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that obviously is going to change things uh, quite a bit. You'll see the times getting quicker. I think you'll see the folks of like Toyotas who are up on the running order yeah. to yeah. start to get faster. So I think they'll start to claw back time. But whether or not they'll claw back enough time from day one is the question. That is a big question. The stages are looking pretty good. Similar stages. One or two new stages. Uh, to last year's schedule. If you remember back to last year's Acropolis rally, we had some pretty awful weather when we headed up into the mountains. It was raining, it was cold, it was wet, it was very slippery. And Robin Perra was clearly the man who mastered that. During the recce mark, it was raining, it was foggy. We're expecting, by the way, folks, in terms of weather, you know, forget that weather we had last year, 35 degrees we're expecting by Saturday. Classic. Absolutely classic, but how much of a difference is that going to make? You've wrecked, it's wet, it's muddy, it's foggy, you perhaps can't see too far in front of you. You then come out on Saturday and then again on Sunday and the weather's totally different, it's dried up. How much of a difference might we expect to see in the, the shape of the stages? Would, would the notes be maybe a little bit iffy? Yeah, well, not only did it rain, it monsooned here. Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah. So, so that's going to change things a lot. I think the, the one thing to note is they, the, the crews will not know the surface changes. Yeah. They will see that you know it was you know muddy throughout. They will not know if the surface changes because it's just consistent when it rains, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when it dries out, you'll see different grip changes. You'll start to see the rock surfacing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be completely different to, to what they wreck And I actually think uh, the the um, tomorrow stages are the stages that they. Uh, Recied on Tuesday when it rained. Yeah, so yeah. That, that makes things interesting. You know what? I think all three stages on Saturday are going to be challenging. In particular, that Tarzan stage. It's still going to be wet in places. There could even be standing water. There'll be plenty of mud, and as you saw, there'll be plenty of monster rocks in the stages to catch those who are perhaps not a hundred percent focused to catch them out. It's going to be a real challenge. Sunday then, three stages, 45 k's. It's a funny old day Sunday. You know, the rally will more or less be decided, I'm pretty sure, by Saturday night. Mark, when we take everything into account, road position, first passes on Friday, mountains on Saturday, what's your bet for this weekend? Who do you think is going to master these Acropolis conditions? Are you asking me for my top three? Top three, please, would be <laughs> lovely. All right, number one, um, Elfin Evans. Number yeah. one is definitely going to be Elfin Evans. Oh, I thought it was Elfin behind us, by the way. It's not. It's no. Cali Rovan Perra. Cali Rovan Perra. Number one, Elfin Evans. Yeah, that's, one... that's a good shout, actually. Yeah, and you know why? He's got a decent road position tomorrow. Because he has to push. 
I think yeah. Cali yeah. doesn't yeah. have to push. I think he yeah. has the long championship in his in his yeah. mind. Uh, so I think Elfman's really going to go for it. And then yeah. I'm also placing my money on M Sport. I want to. Yeah, I think I a lot of us place do. my, yeah. my yeah. money on M Sport. Yeah. I think with with Hyundai, you know, reliability is always. Say that and, again. Hyundai or reliability is always kind of an nah, issue. You don't nah. think so? No, no, no. I don't think the pronunciation is right. Try again. Hyundai. Perfect. Not quite perfect. <laughs> Better. It's only because he's had a real go at me about my terrible pronunciation of his name, and I apologize for that. It has been pretty poor. Hyundai. Is that a silent Y? Uh, maybe Europe versus America. Yeah, slightly yeah, no, different. We don't, it's all good fun. It's all good fun. So go ahead. I interrupted your top three. So who have we got? We've got. Well, do you hear that? That's still sounding rough as uh, bag of spanners. Uh, a little better. I think they're working on it. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully it's getting yeah. a little bit better. But anyways, top three. Uh, so top three. Number one, uh, I think it's going to be Alfin Evans. Mm. Number two, I'm going to give to Craig Breen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think he really needs this, and yeah. I hope that the M Sport folks have gotten a little bit of a breather after Eep after yeah. a disastrous yeah. rally. It's I awful. certainly hope so. Yeah. And uh, if the misfire gets sorted, I'd love to see Loeb on the podium. Do you know what? I think that's a really good shout. Those three, I'm not sure the order, but I think those three could well make up our podium at the end of the weekend. It's going to be a challenging week, that's for sure. It's going to be an entertaining and interesting week here in, well, Greece for the Acropolis Rally of the Gods. 303 kilometres, 16 stages. The super special in the Olympic Stadium. Who won all the gold medals? Who was the star of that Olympics in 2004, wasn't it, the Athens Olympics? Who was it? Wow. Who was the star? I'm looking at cameraman. I don't Can know. Can we remember? I don't know. I can't remember is either. It, is that the one where Gigi Galli had the... Uh... Mm, well, he, he wasn't in the Olympics himself. No, but obviously. <laughs> but back, back when... he deserved to be in the Olympics. <laughs> uh, we don't know. But who's going to be the star of the Olympic Stadium tonight? I don't know either. We'll find out soon. The place to be, folks, for all the news, all the drama, all the excitement as it unfolds here on the Acropolis Rally of the Gods is... Dirtfish.com. It absolutely is. Mm -hmm.